do you guys have like freedom? Because you have to do whatever he tells you to do, right? Whatever what? Say again, please. So he has to do, like you should do uh, whatever Allah told to do. Yes. So do you have any like freedom what you do? Allah give us freedom. Allah said, give us freedom. But at the same time, you need to remember, this is haram and this is halal. Allah said, if you do the haram things, but at the same time, Allah is the most is the most forgivable. Allah said, He told us, "Oh my servant," He said, "Do not, as long you come to me, whilst you're asking me for forgiveness, I will forgive you. No matter your sins is like ocean." That's good. But I don't know. I think. Like... See now. <laughs> How do you have, why do you have to follow everything he says? Do, don't you follow whatever your parents say? So, do you believe to respect your parents? Yeah, yeah, you respect So, them. how can you respect your parents if you don't follow them? You don't follow everything no, they do say. You, know, you have your own path. But what is, what, but what if your parents are telling you good? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you follow their advice, but you don't follow their every word. Okay, who knows better about myself, Allah or myself? No, Allah knows me more than me. He knows you more than you. Yes, He knows my. Allah knows me more than I know myself. I don't know myself. Allah knows me. Do you know why? Because He's the one who created me. You tell me now. The person who made this phone. Does this phone know the one who made him? But the person who made this phone, he knows what's inside. Yes. Yeah. So that's how. What about Allah then? Allah is more than that example. It makes sense. Yeah. So what I'm saying is now, like now we have king and queen in UK, yes. Whatever the law says, you have to follow, yes. Yeah, doesn't mean necessarily. Okay, right. but you have to. You have option. No, but it's not necessarily. But what right, happens though. if you? But okay, what happens if you disobey the law? You go to jail. Thank you. But so that Allah. It doesn't mean you have to believe in whatever they're saying. No, but you have to follow. So whatever Allah says is more than myself, he's more than my parents, he's more than everything. In Islam... What was if, the, what was if Allah goes against the laws that are here? What do you mean? Like what if he says something that's like illegal? Then that's my fault. That is my fault. If I have choice, because not Allah brought me here, yes? Yeah. Because I have choice. If I want, I can live from this country. I can go away and go somewhere else where I can find Islamic law. See? Yeah. But... My scholars, as Muslims, we believe every Muslim should respect the country which he lives in. Oh, yeah. Because I'm the one who came here. Did they force me to come here? No, you should 100% respect. Yeah, I have yeah. to respect their law. Yeah. They never forced me to come here, so I have to stay, abide their law. I cannot go against their law, otherwise I will go to prison. And Allah told me I cannot put myself into danger. Why would I put myself into danger? So when I got options. If he tells you to do something, but it's putting you in danger. Say again. Say again. If he's telling you, Allah's telling you to do something. Yeah. But it's putting you at danger. Like, let's say, let me give you an example now. Do you know in Islam we cannot insult Allah? You know Allah told us if we are forced to insult Him, we insult Him. We have options. We either accept that person to punish us, or we insult Allah, but we don't mean it. See? So you can say it and not mean it. Yeah, you can say it. But to save your life, you're still a Muslim. Because you never wanted to do that. You never wanted to insult Allah. But you have no other option. But the guy, the guy is saying to you, I got the gun here. You have to insult Allah or I will shoot you. What would you do? Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to get shot. Yeah, of course. <laughs> if you want to, that's your choice to die. Yeah. But Allah said, you can insult you can insult him as long as you don't mean it. In Islam, I'm telling you, whatever you think is difficult to practice Islam, Allah told us in the Quran, He did not make the religion hard. Hard. There's no hardship in Islam. Example, yeah. Example now, let me give you an example. And let's say, prayer. When I'm praying Salah, I'm performing, I'm worshipping God. Prophet told us, if I cannot worship, God, whilst I'm standing, because of illness, I got a valid reason. Prophet told us, pray whilst you're sitting. If you can't pray whilst you're sitting, Prophet told us, whilst you're lying down. You can pray wherever you want. Yes. See, we have options. Fasting, 
you're sick. You feel dizzy, weak, weakness. You feel dizzy and weak. Allah never forced us. He said, break your fast, pay another day. Traveling even. Everything, traveling. When we are traveling, we shorten the prayers. Let's say now the second prayer and the third prayer and fourth prayer, instead of praying four, we pray only two. We shorten. Islam, everything is about ease. Do not say, oh, I'm a Mu and I can't accept Islam because there is chat and uh, the rules are more strict. Allah said, fear him as much as you can. Fear him. Fear him. Fe Allah, fear me. He said, fear me yeah. as much as you can. But why do you want to be scared of him? No, fear him. Mean, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, certain things you cannot do, yes? Yeah. You think it's difficult to do them. them. So that's why Allah is making ease for you. If you can't do this, doesn't mean you're out of Islam. You're not a Muslim. As long you believe what you're doing is haram, yeah, and you don't insult Allah without a valid reason, or no one, without no one forcing you, then it's fine. As long if you don't pray Salah, or if you don't pay zakah or don't fast, but you believe fasting is must, but at the same time you're not fasting, doesn't, that doesn't mean you're out of Islam. You're still a Muslim. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah? you still sin, yes. you can still be in the religion. Yeah, you still be in the religion. As long you're not insulting Allah, Prophet Muhammad, or saying, oh, I don't believe this verse, I don't believe this. Because disbelieving one of the verses of the Quran is disbelieving Allah. Do you understand? You have to believe the whole Bible. The whole Quran. The whole Quran, sorry. Yes. Not just saying, I believe this verse and I don't believe this verse. But the rest, you're fine. So tell me anything do you have now that stops you except in Islam. Islam is a beautiful religion. I mean I haven't read the Do you know what Prophet told us? Prophet told us Islam is like one body. What happens to your body if this finger, one of your fingers, harms you in the night? What happens? My finger pain harms you. Me. No, let, no, sorry. What happens if one of your fingers pains you, causing pain for you? Oh, like you hurt your finger. Yeah. And you feel pain. What happens to the rest of your body? It's fine. It's just your finger. No, would you sleep if you feel pain, severe pain from this finger? No. Would you sleep? No. You, do you have, if you have a headache, would you sleep? The rest of your body would rest? No, yes? No. Prophet told us Islam is like one body. We all have one body around the world. So if you have a headache, everyone has a headache? No, it, it's basically, it, Prophet is telling us, it's a metaphor, he's telling us Islam, Muslims are just like one body. One body. The way we care, the whole nation, the whole nation, Muslim nation, one body. Oh, so like. Do you understand? No, so like no, no, not about that. Your fingers hurt. No, if your fingers hurt, what happens to the rest of your body? No, I'm just giving an example. Yeah? Yeah, I told you. I told her. Yeah, I told her. So, do you understand now? Yeah. Yes? So, let me give you an example. Prophet said Islam is like one body, which means if part of your body... Wait, please wait. Yes, it's like one body, yes. I just said, brother. Muslims. Okay, sorry. Muslims is like one body. He said the rest, if part of your body pains, cause you pain, the rest of your body won't rest, yes? yes? And won't sleep. So, Prophet told us, if my Muslim fellow, even my Muslim fellow feels pain, I have to feel what he feels. That's what I'm like, trying to explain. Like empathetically? Yes. Right. Even not so just not, Muslims, not, like not just even Muslims, even humanity. Yeah. Prophet told us, if my neighbor even is a non-Muslim and is starving, Prophet said, you're not a believer, you shouldn't eat. You, you need to share. You need to share. Yeah, when you just give him yes. food, they'll starve. So Prophet told us, if your neighbor is starving yeah. and you're eating, you're full. Yeah, you're full and your neighbor is starving. Prophet said, you're not. Yeah, your food. your faith is incomplete. Do you know why? Because your neighbor is starving and you're eating. Yeah, you would give them food. Yes. Yeah, you wouldn't just eat it. Prophet told us a dog. People think we Muslims hate dogs. We don't hate dogs. <laughs> That's false. I told. Do you know why? Why?
prophet told us there's a lady, she went to heaven, she got the mercy of Allah. Do you know why? Because of being kind to a dog. The dog was starving. And that person seen the dog walking around and bringing his tongue out. And that person went to the water well or somewhere and that person took water and gave it to the dog. And the Prophet told us because of that, that person went to heaven. A dog cycle? No, that person was being generous, kind to a dog. What about if you're being kind to humans? It's more than that, yes? Yeah. And a person, a lady, went, went to he uh, hellfire because of punishing a cat. In Islam, even we care about the animals. Doesn't mean we Muslims have tried to avoid dogs. Doesn't mean we hate dogs. It's just because of the saliva. Do you see the saliva? Now scientists, they found out it's got bacteria. So because of that, even now they say never allow your dog licks your... Yes, the germs comes out from the mouth, the saliva. It's not about the skin. It's about the saliva. Yeah, of course. Now if I see a, a rat now here, if I run away from the rat and I don't want to touch the rat, does that mean I hate the rat? Doesn't mean I hate it. It's just because ah, I don't want to touch it. It's got bacteria or whatever. Yeah, it would you so touch? Gross. Yeah, would you touch something with you which has got a germ? No. You wouldn't. So does that mean you hate it? Doesn't mean that. See? 